June 2016 Trump Tower meeting with Donald Trump Jr., Jared Kushner, Paul Manafort, and some Russians. The Senate Judiciary Committee releasing nearly 2,000 pages of interviews about that tonight. Senator Lindsey Graham sits on that committee, and he joins me now. Senator, great to see you tonight. There is quite a bit to discuss with you, um, yes. and we're glad to have you here. But let me talk to you first about the summit. What do you make Thanks. of what Kim Jong-un said in terms of the possibility of canceling? You know, they kind of played this game in the past. The only I, advice I can give North Korea, and I honestly mean this, if you're not serious about doing a deal with the president, if you're not willing to give up your nukes for a better life for North Korea, don't meet with the president. The worst thing you could do is sit down and meet with President Trump, then try to play him, because if you do that, we're going to have a war and you're going to lose it. So if you're not serious, please don't meet with the president. You know, there was some suggestion that uh, John Bolton mentioned the Libya model yeah. and that that, you know, may have been a factor because Kim Jong-un does not want to end up like Muammar Gaddafi. Right. Um, and Mike Pompeo, the secretary of state, was asked a little bit about what assurances we might be willing to give Kim Jong-un on security by Chris Wallace. Let's take a look. As part of that, are we in effect saying to Kim, if you give us what we want, you can stay on in power? We will have to provide security assurances to, to be sure. This has been the trade-off that has been uh, pending for 25 years. So what do you think that means? Well, I think it's pretty, I think he's dead right. So here's the way it works. We end the Korean War, which has never ended. We sign a peace treaty with North Korea, South Korea, China, and the United States. We recognize North Korea uh, as a sovereign country. We have no desire to invade North Korea. We're not trying to unify South Korea and North Korea. We just want North Korea to give up their nuclear weapons program, which is a threat to us in the world. For that, they'll get a guarantee of, of security and hopefully a better economy because the sanctions will be relieved. Here's the other choice. Keep threatening America. Keep building nuclear weapons and ICBMs. Get in a war with Donald Trump and lose it. Those are your two choices. You know, I, but, I, you know, Kim Jong-un clearly has people around him who say that it would be crazy for him to give up the biggest weapon that he has and the biggest weapon that he can <laughs> hold over um, the rest of the world. And, right. you know, we may be seeing him having some second thoughts here on that front. Also, what about the people of North Korea who've lived on the dark continent for all these decades? And what's to stop them once they have no nukes and they have, you know, a lot of light shed into their country <laughs> from rebelling against this regime that has put hundreds of thousands of people in labor camps. Uh, you're thinking too hard here. Here's what's crazy, is to keep building ICBMs that can deliver a nuclear weapon to America and believe that Donald Trump won't do anything about it. Mm -hmm. That probably worked with Obama, but I'm here to tell North Korea that our president has drawn a red line. If you keep threatening the American homeland with a nuclear weapon, uh, we're going to destroy your regime. It's that simple. So if you want to survive, Kim Jong-un, you need to sit down with the president and do a deal, giving up your nukes in return. We'll guarantee your security and end the Korean War. If you keep doing what you're doing, you're miscalculating Donald Trump. He's not Obama. You do this at your own peril. To those who are advising Kim Jong-un to continue down the path you're going, bad advice. All right, we will see. Um, quick question for you about the piece in the New York Times about Mike Pence <laughs> and the operation that he's building to give support to the Republican Party across the country as they head into November. Uh, there was some suggestion in the headline of that piece, which was <laughs> Pence is trying to control Republican politics. <laughs> Trump aides aren't happy. And they quoted you as saying this, the White House is looking for people to stay on the team, not break away from the team. You want to comment on that? Yeah, the bottom line is Mike Pence, uh, this pact with Corey and Mike is music to my ears. I think an organized effort led by Mike Pence and Corey uh, Corey to save the Republican majority makes perfect sense to me. There is no more loyal person to Donald Trump than Mike Pence. Mike is smart as hell, and I am glad they're doing this. This is welcome news as far as I'm concerned. Senator Lindsey Graham, always good to see you, sir. Thanks for being Thank here you. tonight. So my next guest is the aforementioned President Trump's first campaign manager and now reportedly back in the political game, joining Vice President Pence's Political Action Committee, Corey Lewandowski, uh, joins me now. Corey, good to see you. Good to have you here tonight. Um, so this is, was also in that, that New York Times piece. Even as he laces his public remarks with praise for the president, this is Mike Pence they're talking about, Vice President Pence and his influential chief of staff, Nick Ayers, are unsettling a group of Mr. Trump's fierce loyalists 